Hey team, Brenegade here, how's it going? Uh, 30 degrees uh, out in my backyard at the moment, um, <coughs> so she's a real scorcher of a day. Um, it's a little bit windy, it's a, a little bit windier than the, the weather forecast promised that it would be, so um, not exactly perfect for, uh, for flying wings, but um, we're going to give that a go today anyway. Um, I can't remember if I told the story or not, but uh, about a year ago I um, totally smashed up my AR, well I smashed up the nose of it. Um, I had one of the mode switches in the wrong place and took off and um, I was doing manual launches at that stage so I threw it up into the air uh, and it just nosedived straight into the ground and, and smashed bits of foam off. So uh, in a rage I put it away in the cupboard for about a year, <laughs> um, pulled it out and I've hot glued it all back together again. Um, I've had a couple of test flights, it's all flying fine. Um, I threw auto launch on it which was like super nerve-wracking the first time I did it but um, literally I just throw it into the air um, and it just soars off at a million miles an hour um, so yeah it takes a lot of the stress out of launching so um, as well as that I upgraded to um, INA 4.0 um, I've also put GPS logging on to um, my Tango 2 so um, that's what I'm out here to try out today to see uh, what happens with the with the GPS logging um, the plan is to take the details that are in the GPS log um, pass them through the OpenTX companion and then put them into um, put them into Google Earth so I can um, you know, have a look at where I flew I guess <laughs> um, just yeah nerding out on numbers more than anything else so um, yeah so that's the plan for today um, so yeah nice to have you along for the ride uh, and we'll see what we can get this computer to spit out the other end so uh, funny thing happened on the way to the field yesterday <laughs> I popped out here to um, have a fly with the AR uh, and then went back inside to uh, punch the numbers into um, OpenTX uh, and then into taking that into Google Maps which I'm about to show you uh, after this flight how, how I do that um, and when I sat down the GPS logging was well off um, it looked like I had maxed out at about two kilometers an hour uh, and it had only traveled from like here to that gate over there uh, and that was it so um, there was something slightly uh, screw going on with the data. Um, turns out I had managed to set the logging so it turned on when I disarmed and turned back off again when I armed. So I was basically tracking me walking the model uh, from there back to here and that was it. Um, so yeah, way less than ideal. Um, so I'm going to have a go now uh, and then we'll shoot inside and punch in the numbers again now that it's actually on the, arm, the armed state of that switch um, and see what comes up. Yeah. Right, so that's about where we landed. Um, I've just checked the uh, value on the Tango too. I don't know if we can see that. Oh, there's probably too much flicker. 
uh, check the value on the Tango 2 anyway, uh, punch that into Google Maps to see what we came up with, um, and it's pretty damn close. Uh, it's saying it's just probably just about there, uh, which is you know close enough for me to be able to find it if it's down based purely on what's on there. So um, I'm pretty happy with that level of, of logging. Um, so let's pop inside now and uh, see how we get on. Right, cool. So now we're back inside. Um, I've got my Tango 2 plugged into my computer uh, via USB. So I set it up as a um, USB storage, um, which gives me access to a couple of uh, folders. We've got a couple of yeah, a couple of drives show up. Um, I've got this M drive, which is the Tango 2 um, kind of system. Um, don't want to muck around with that. Uh, but the L drive here is basically what we would have had um, as our standard SD card contents on any other uh, OpenTX radio. So just got our usual folders in here. So inside, um, we've got a logs folder. Um, we've got a bunch of logs in here. So these are the th these three here are logs that my um, that my Tango Two have generated. Um, this one here is a slightly modified version of, of today's log. Um, so yeah, yesterday's log didn't have the right information, and in today's log does. Um, so basically, all I've done is I grabbed the CSV file. Um, uh, you could open this inside of um, Excel or uh, Open Office or something like that. Um, I currently don't have any uh, Office software on my computer, so um, I've used Google um, Google Sheets to edit this. So basically, I open up the CSV inside Google Sheets, um, and this is the GPS. Uh, sorry, the, all of excuse me, the logging information that I've got. Um, yeah, twenty third of the first, uh, four twenty seven p.m. Um, I do have information inside of this GPS column, but I've got it hidden at the moment. Um, just I don't want that sort of publicly coming up. Um, I've got speed information, uh, heading, and I've got altitude. So these are the kind of the things that are important. Um, the one thing that you will need to do to make sure that you get a proper altitude information inside of um, inside of Google Earth is to actually change the name of this here. So something's uh, yeah something odds happened with the um, with the output format inside of OpenTX. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to jump in here. In fact, it's a I believe it's a Tango 2 or Crossfire related thing, Crossfire thing, I think. Anyway, um, we whack a G in front of that. So we want, we want it to be as the altitude relative to the ground. Um, so we're just going to uh, rename that particular um, field there. Uh, and then we can just export that or download that uh, as a CSV file. So we've downloaded that as a CSV. Um, we can pop it into um, that L drive. I mean, you should really save it to your computer rather than your Tango 2, but let's put it on Tango 2. Um, we're going to save it as this file here. We hit save. Um, yes, I do want to replace it. Right, so now I've got that CSV data that um, came off of my um, Tango 2. I've altered it slightly to change that to um, ground relative altitude. Um, cool. So in OpenTX, what I need to do now is just uh, use this view log file here. Um, before we do though, there's one thing you do have to do to be able to get Google Earth to work properly. Uh, under settings and settings, you just need to go to the application settings um, and set the path to your Google Earth executable. So um, that's relatively easy to find um, simply by figuring out where Google Earth is installed. Um, we can go right click, uh, open file location. That is also a shortcut, so we go right click and properties. Um, and that's your path there. So you just need to grab the folder for that um, and whack it into that. Uh, yeah, folder and yeah, that, that whole path in there. Cool. And what that means is when we jump in here and we open up the log file, um, oh, we've jumped to another place there again, uh, back into my L drive, logs. Um, we can open up that modified CSV that we, um, we downloaded from uh, Google Drive or wherever you happen to save it from from your computer. Um, we can open that. Um, and we've got all this log information inside here. Once we've got that, all we have to do is click on um, Google Earth here. Click on Google Earth here. And what'll happen is it should load up uh, inside of our temporary, oh, what is this? Uh, inside of our temporary places, it's gonna zoom right into little old New Zealand um, and it's gonna find uh, my track there and what you can see there is there's little bits where it's actually gone under um, under the ground which is a little bit less than ideal so we can right click um, hit properties um, and under altitude here instead of being absolute altitude uh, we can say relative to ground okay uh, and now I've got this wonderful 3d path of my flight which is really kind of cool um, useful maybe don't know not sure um, but what we can do is we can hit this, uh, we can rewind this whole thing here and we can play it back and watch my little AR fly around. All over the shop. 
which is quite neat. So yeah, that's kind of all there is to um, making sure, uh, but to get, getting that GPS log information out into something that you can kind of visually see. Um, which yeah may or may not be useful for you um, it could be useful if you're flying near neighbors and they're complaining about you flying over their private property um, you could you know kind of show them your log files and say absolutely I did not fly directly over your house Jane sorry about that I actually did um, Jane's cool with me flying by the way so it's not